All right, the day is finally here. We do have a pollination before July, thank goodness. All right, so what I've done here is uh, put, well, I put this towel up here to keep the this leaf from scratching into the actual fruit. Uh, this guy's open, but I put a I put a twisty tie on it to keep the bugs out of it to keep other things from pollinating it. So let's go ahead and open that now. And how many lobes? We got a four lober. Okay, that's cool. Four lobes. Um, so then we got male flowers. I brought these in last night. Stamen's got the pollen grains and rub it all over the lobes. So here we go. All right, here we go. I need to get over here. I can actually see it. <laughs> Needs some sex music, right? It's actually a threesome. I've got, uh, I've got some, I've got another male. If there's, I don't think any other males bloomed on this. I've only got two available, but you know, two's probably enough. Ugh. Really get it in there. Get all as many of the grains as you can. The grains are big enough. You can actually see them. So you, yeah, now you can see the, uh, the stamen's pretty bare now. There we go. All right. Let's grab this one. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one, and then we'll tie it back up. Okay, we're all done. We got it pollinated with the two males. So this is self self pollinated here. Let's get a look at the fruit down there. Fruit's got kind of a skinny looking shape. Nah. Yep, it'll be all right though. And then, uh, as you can see over here, I've got. If I wanted to get these field pumpkins, I better pollinate them too because I don't think the bugs are out here doing it. So, I guess I'll take care of that too. What up? It's June 29th. We got a nice, thick plant here coming on. Now, I know a lot of other growers are bigger. That's okay. They're more experienced. This is my real first year doing this. We got a DAP2 right down here. I think it took. It felt pretty firm to me. Um, it was nice uh, as a four lober. But yeah, looks good. I put, I put that uh, towel in there to keep the leaf stem from uh, brazing it up. Um, once I know for sure that it's taken, after about a week, maybe, maybe 10 days, I'll prune that leaf off. Okay, in the meantime, we also have another one here at the tip coming on. That would be the one probably that most growers would, would be the one to keep because it's, uh, it's at a more acceptable length at the vine. This one is about, I want to say 10 feet, 10 or 11 feet, and that one's going to be more like closer to 14, 15, and 15 is like the magic number some people like. Um, we got good side vines coming off now. We're looping them back this way. Uh, and yeah, it's just, it's coming along real well. Everything's looking good. I don't see any problems. I inspected, I got down on my hands and knees, inspected under the canopy. I don't see any squash eggs, squash bug eggs. Um, the side vines are trying to throw some females. We just pinch those off once they're big enough so we don't pinch off the whole vine. And that's, uh, that's how it goes. I just fertilized it too with some, what was it, 18, 18, 21, I guess, that, that particular miracle Grow formulation. And it might rain tonight. So if it does, if it does rain, then I won't have to water. If it doesn't rain this evening, then we'll have to do some watering. But, yep. Okay, meanwhile, in the rest of the garden, we still have continuing growth on the uh, uh, watermelon vines. They're going now. My pumpkin, my field pumpkins are starting to get over here, so I'm 
going to try to direct those back that way. And honestly, the field pumpkins have almost taken up their allotted space. So before too long, I'm probably going to have to start terminating some vines on that side. I have already terminated vines on this side. They were secondaries and probably some tertiaries. Uh, so, yeah, see, I'm, I'm kind of lopping them off there and then dab some 6% perox hydrogen peroxide on the end just to make sure they don't get any disease in there because we already got something weird going on with the white spotting that I've, <clears throat> I've already sprayed for that. It doesn't seem to have systematically hurt the plants at this point. Also, it doesn't seem to have spread throughout the plants at this point. However, I'm noticing that uh, the new leaves are showing up with it a little bit. So it might be some kind of, I don't know, it's some kind of thing uh, going on. But yeah, I'm not going to let the, I'm not going to let the uh, field pumpkins get into that area. If they do have something, we're just going to keep them, kind of keep our distance there. The 1739 plant looks perfectly fine. No, no issues on the leaves whatsoever. Um, and then here we have, I've got about, I've got four, I've got four pumpkins that look like this. A little bit bigger than a softball. Um, I have large hands, so. Um, I have to pollinate these myself for the most part. I'm not seeing a lot of bugs. And then the ones that I know that I didn't pollinate uh, are like not really taking so I'm just kind of pinching those off but I got four like this I've got a few more that are kind of like this that's like dap three or four this might be dap uh, I don't know it might be dap seven I don't know but this these aren't like these aren't like seeds from these were not seeds from particularly large field pumpkins they're just standard Connecticut field pumpkin seeds from gurneys but these plants are growing ferociously nevertheless so uh yeah good seeds i would say over here everything else uh i mean weeds the crabgrass on this side it's just it just got got completely out of control i don't there's not a whole lot i can do about it right now these are all root crops anyway we got carrots potatoes onions um they'll be okay over here broccoli's doing well the head lettuce is doing well even the green beans have come back from their little uh, cook job from the herbicide, but they're coming back and making beans already. Peppers are coming up slow, but sure. They need, uh, they actually need a little bit hotter weather to really start growing. Peas doing real well. We've got uh, some, some pods swelling. You can see all the pods just all the way down the road. Just gonna have a lot of peas. Tomatoes are doing fine. They are the slowest growers in the garden, ironically, most people grow tomatoes and they usually buy the plants from the store and uh, at this point if they did that their plants would be twice as big but I don't care uh, these are these are gonna be I think better producers sweet corns doing really well they say knee-high by the 4th of July well we're at least there and I'm tall so we're doing good actually we're still a little bit ahead of the field corn but we got some good rain so the field corn is going to take off pretty soon, especially if it continues to rain. Sunflowers are getting absolutely gigantic. This one's up to my up to my waist. That's like a three footer, three and a half maybe. Asparagus. Well, the asparagus is in there, but I haven't weeded that either. It's tough to keep a garden like this weeded. Next year we're going to do some weed fabric in between the rows. That'll also help me keep the rows straight because, I mean, look, if you look down the line here, look how crooked it goes. There's supposed to be three feet of space between the tomatoes and the peas. That didn't happen. Um, you know, and I think the day we planted, I was a little bit in a hurry. You know, I was trying to do things quick and easy. And that's what you get. When you do a garden and you do quick and easy, it, it gets sloppy. So do yourselves a favor and do it right the first time. If you don't have the energy to do it right the first time, then wait a day. And then do it on a day when you do have energy because you'll have less work in the long run. The Myers patch is under attack from crabgrass. 
look at all that crabgrass surrounding my onions. Um, we had several days of rain off and on, so I couldn't really get in here without everything turning into a mud pit uh, and get weeds out. So in the meantime, the crabgrass decided to uh, take up residence once again, because I've cleared all this out before and it just keeps coming back. Um, anyway, here's, here's our 1739. This is a much larger plant now. It is, uh, I really like the side vine development here. Nice big leaves. And uh, then we'll come over here and, oh, do I see something over there? Oh, I see. What do I see? I see uh, a pumpkin. That's step nine right there. Um, I'm not going to cut the leaf off there just yet. It's providing some pretty good shade. I'll wait till it gets a little bigger to cut off that leaf. That's right there, but uh, yeah, it's looking looking like it took. Um, I did pollinate that one over there. Naturally, that one's on the other side of the vine. Of course, so I got one on the left side and I got one on the right side. Also, uh, with all the rain we had, I didn't have as much chance to come out here and uh, bury the vines like I wanted to, but I got some of the bigger ones uh, down there. I got those in. Some of these side vines right here I haven't done yet, and uh, yeah, I'm probably going to come out tomorrow and do those. I did some pruning too. I pruned off the secondary next to the, next to the pumpkin there. Uh, I pruned off a lot of... Uh, a lot of the male flowers that were getting ready to bloom. You know, it's just kind of a, you know, if you have time, you come out every day and you do stuff like that. I just haven't had time slash uh, bad weather. So, but the plant's growing nevertheless. We got a little bit of heat stress down here. I'm not sure if this is some kind of a fungus or if it's just got, or if they just got scorched um, because obviously some of these leaves down here are getting Less well, that rip right there. I did that myself. That was an accident. Um, but the leaves, the new leaves coming in, they look fine. So I don't think it's any sort of a progressive fungus or disease or anything like that. I think that's just a little scorch from uh, just them being too dry. Let's take that off. <clears throat> I don't have my, I, I don't, I guess I'm not going to spray that. I don't have my, uh, <laughs> I don't have my, Hydrogen peroxide. I, I spray hydrogen peroxide 6% on any place I make a cut, usually. So, just to keep it nice and sterile. The crab, there was crab, well, there's some right there. Of course, there was a vine there, so I didn't do that. But, there was crabgrass all around. This plant came out here with the hoop hoe and pulled it all out earlier. Field pumpkins, I'm not too worried about the, what's going to happen to the field pumpkins pumpkins, because as you can see, the field pumpkins are, are, are just fine. Look, I mean, look at that guy in there. That's a good sized pumpkin already. And I got one over there that's actually bigger than that. So I'm not, I'm not too concerned about the field pumpkins. We'll be fine. <laughs> uh, I do need to worry about a little bit about the uh, my watermelon here. Obviously, crabgrass growing within the the vines here. I need to get in there, pull that out, and start looking around for females because I think uh, I'm going to have to pollinate them myself. I'm not sure if the bees are doing it. The honeybees are back now that some of the Canada smoke has cleared out. Let's move this a little bit here. There we go. So uh, I think uh, we had a lot of lack of uh, honeybees around here just because of the the uh, smoke in the atmosphere they probably didn't like it so they decided to take a hike for a while but they're back I saw them out here they were actually messing around when I pollinated the second 1739 and uh, I, <laughs> I actually of course I didn't close that one the night before so it was wide open when I got in here and there were bees inside of it I don't know, it's probably gonna be all right. And if not, this one, it could, I mean, technically it could still abort, but it looks like it's growing really well. I think it's a good length from the stump. Um, that one's, I mean, 
that one's probably more like professional compet- competition grower length from the stump. I don't know if I'm going to have anything competition worthy, but we're certainly going to, you know, just grow as big as I can, I guess. We still got a lot of uh, time in the season. It's early July. It's July 5th or 6th. And my son, my son just hurt himself. So we're going to go see what's going on there.